Okay, let's call this uh, meeting of the Unionville Historic District and Properties Commission to order. It's August 12, 2021. Um, have you all had a chance to uh, read the June 3, 2021 minutes? If you have, just indicate by nodding yes. Yes. I can see you all. Um, thank you. Um, may I have a, a motion to approve the minutes? I so move. Thank you, Barbara. A second? Second. Thank you, Matt. Any discussion or changes to the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any nays? Abstentions? No. Good. Okay, minutes approved. Um, <laughs> what, Bob? That's because Sherry's not here. Yeah, oh, that's right. <laughs> I know we depend on her so much. Um, now let's see, Shannon, would you read the? Um, we'll now open the public hearing for um, 230 Main Street in Unionville. Shannon, could you please read the um, the notice for us? Certainly. Uh, Town of Farmington Unionville Historic District and Properties Commission notice is hereby given that the Unionville Historic District and Properties Commission will hold an online and in-person hybrid public hearing on Thursday, August 12, 2021 at 7 p.m. on the following application. 230 Main Street LLC application for certificate of appropriateness to replace window on west side of home and install propane tank and HVAC HV unit on side of home at 230 Main Street Unionville. At this hearing, interested persons may be heard and written communications received. A copy of this proposal is on file in the planning department at Town Hall, Farmington, Connecticut, and may also be accessed on Farmington's official website, https wwwfarmington ctorg government district commission unionville historic district commission dated at Farmington CT, July 22, 2021, Unionville Historic District and Properties Commission, Lisa Johnson, Chair. Thanks, Shannon. Well, let's open this uh, a public hearing by asking George Saras to the owner to step forward and walk us through his application. Welcome, George. Hi, thank you for uh, meeting for me again. I appreciate that so much. I know it's August and uh, it's Somewhat beautiful, a little warm, but I do appreciate all your help and guidance through this. So, thank you. Um, okay, so uh, I, I'm changing over the HVAC in the house, and at this point, chose to um, add AC um, for days like today. Uh, and um, with the AC comes um, condensing units that have to sit outside of the house, um, and the closest place without running too long of lines and creating some sort of a weird configuration would be on that west side of the house. Um, so I'm looking at putting the units right there, probably close to where the proposed um, new window is going to be, somewhere hidden right in that vicinity. Um, the second thing would be a propane tank. I'm switching from oil to uh, propane. This one can be discussed because really there's kind of a, a few ways we can go about this. One is just putting it you know, 25 meters, 50 meters back, hidden um, in the in the in the woods back here. This is all hidden. Um, two, we can bury it, um, which is something that can be done, um, which will save all of us probably a lot of time too. So that's something that I'm not opposed to doing either. Um, so yeah, that was really uh, the two things with that. And then um, that's a thousand gallon tank, and there's a 500 gallon tank. I have a um, spec sheet for the different ones. Uh, the thousand gallon is 16 feet, 16 feet long, um, four, um, four feet high. And I think uh, the 500 is just shy of eight feet, I wanna say, or nine feet. And this is what it would look like when it's buried uh, instead of standing out. This is the uh, proposed window that's five uh, five by five. Right here, right? 
Correct. Mm -hmm. The units would go here, George. Um, maybe there, or maybe a little more to the to the right. Yeah, somewhere probably maybe where there's no window, um, right in between those two windows. Yeah, here in the main portion of the house, or back in this area. Right where you are now. Okay. And that way I can hide it with. Yeah, that way I can hide it with some landscaping as well. Is the hatchway going to end up being removed? Uh, no, it'll stay there. So because if that five and a half. If that five by five, five, five window, I'll probably put them right next to the hatchway. Got or it. Or worst so, case, under them. Yeah. So the five by five is being shortened in height. Is that is that what's happening? Shortened in height and width, correct. Got it. So they right. so oh, I see. Yeah. Yep, I think it's 32 by 32. One unit or multiples? It would be two because there's two um, air handlers. Okay. So you propose to put them side by side? Is that? Right. Yeah, okay. Right. Okay. So to the to the left of the hatchway, so it's really they're going to end up almost under that window. A portion of them are going to be under that window then. Probably, yeah. I mean, I can put them on the other side of the hatchway too. Either or, it really doesn't matter. Um, okay. <clears throat> and are you going to have plantings in front of it? Yes. Okay. So it's not going to become the focal point as you drive by. Oh, God, no. No. <laughs> you won't even see it because it's fairly far back from the street. Yeah. Yeah. I'll also have, Arbor, Arbor, I'm planning on putting Arborvitae's up in front of the house um, at some point as well. Not to hide the house too much, but just for a little bit of a sound barrier. Yeah. Okay. That will all be pulled out. All that landscaping is coming out. Uh, it'll be scratched out, and then what I'll do is um, regrade it, uh, and then we'll clean it up nicely. Okay. One of the many projects. Um, so I, it's we sounds like we let's start. Um, so we're already talking about the condensing units um, for the AC systems. Does anybody have any other questions for George? about uh, the location of those. Um, no? Okay. I assume um, that it's within a... Is that Barbara? Barbara, we got, you got cut off. Um, Probably lose our audio. Yeah, uh, Shannon, we're 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 none of us can hear the audio. If you can hear us, double check that it could be switching between the the webcam and the microphones in the room. I called in on the phone. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. I called in on the it's phone. Okay. So it's a connection thing with the phone because we're using the table phone. Oh. So Barbara, none of us heard your entire what you just said. So if you could start at the beginning, that would be great. That the position of the um, condensers are close to where the air handlers are and where the ductwork is. Yeah. So uh, what so your what is the point? I think we all missed the point of your statement. Oh, well no the point no because you you would uh, I'm just that there wouldn't be any other place to move it. it oh I see on how yeah. the other you know parts of the air conditioning system are, are already placed. 
or will be applied. Yeah. So fun the function and the ins yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, but I could split them up instead of bulking them together. Um, being that one is upstairs and one is in the front side of the basement. But I figured just keep everything together, nice and neat. Yeah. Is it possible to to push them far? Oh, I guess looking at this picture right here, is it possible to push one of them to the far back? And then one maybe just around that corner with that landscaping idea of landscaping around it. Um, just to keep the keep it minimized in terms of the the view of the the condenser units from from that street view. Um, so when you say far rear corner, you mean by the back patio? Um, so if we take this picture and we scroll to the left, so if you if you look at the the left edge of the existing window like one on that corner and then one just around the, the backside there and then landscape and kind of a, a half moon or a, a three quarter moon essentially around it, Does that still put it in proximity to where you need it for the air handlers? It's a little farther, but I was trying to avoid putting them near the patio for sound. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so George, where then, um, Oh, this is not the window you're replacing. Is that right? This is. No. This yeah, is the window you're replacing. Correct. So, so if we could, uh, I'd like to kind of look at both of those things together. Um, the, the replacement window is going to be a different size from what we're seeing in this photograph. Is that right? Correct. You'll see, actually, you can see the frame out inside of it. Oh, oh, that's okay. convenient. Okay. Okay. So, the, yeah. yeah. It's okay. A casement window. Great. So the uh, the height of the condensing units will they will they um, stay between the uh, delineation of the ground and the bottom of the window? Yes, they will. Okay. Great. All right. That's great. That's very helpful. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you framed that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> good. All right. Any other questions for George about the condensing units or? How close are they going to be to the propane tank? Is um, there a limit? I mean, there, there must be some variant area that's got to be between them, I would think. Especially when you're filling the tank, you wouldn't want that stuff to be around your um, ventilation system. There's the AC up against the house, and the propane tank, if it's above ground, is going to be located all the way back here. Okay. Oh, okay. And, and that's more below. I mean, I can really kind of put the tank anywhere. If that, it went underground, where had you planned on putting it? With the same location if it goes underground or closer to the home? Yeah, I mean, I could put it closer to the home. I didn't, didn't want to put it right in the middle of the yard either, so... Um, okay. One would be helpful for access or filling it. Um, I could put it to the rear of the house where you don't even see it. Um, really kind of anywhere, even where I propose that now we could bury it, so. Hmm. But it would be so covered that you wouldn't even see it if I didn't. Right. It has to be accessible though to be refilled. Correct, so you can pull in from the drive. Uh, so let's say you're coming in from the main driveway from um, Main Street. Um, you have all the way to where you see those cars. Mm -hmm. It's now accessible from that side yard. Mm -hmm. Over this way? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I've never put a propane tank in anything other than my barbecue. But <laughs> it's my understanding from people who have that they will not fill it if it's not totally accessible. And... It looks like where you're putting it, I don't know how you would clear the snow. It's a, or it, it's a thousand, whatever. it's a thousand gallon tank though. So it's a very large tank. Yeah. Think, that was and look at, yeah. I mean, that was one of the questions I had was in terms of the size of it, the proximity to the house and everything. I mean, putting it way back there and above ground is probably one of the, I think it's one of the more ideal situations versus burying. I mean, burying 
a, a, a tank that size while they've improved is still not one of the 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 best environmental things that they, that they recommend at this point putting it above ground but but that's still that's still accessible for that size of a tank correct okay. and with a thousand gallon tank you're essentially well, hopefully only filling it once or twice a year so so george if it is above ground and matt thanks for that information um how would you how would you then kind of um I was going to say hide it. How, how would you hide it? I mean, uh, I, I have a photo now. Um, if you go back to the photos of that yard. So if you keep going back, um, I would go forward maybe one. There's another one. There you go. Okay. So essentially behind all that is really where it would be even in between mm -hmm. some of that. I mean, there's so much brush back there and there's, there's beautiful old, nothing's going to be really disturbed. So It'll just be covered. I've actually never seen one above ground before, so. Um, and it doesn't have to be a thousand gallon. I mean, I could do a five hundred, and we could put it somewhere else. I mean, it's just. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um. Hmm. Okay. And then, how are you getting it from there to your house? Um, that'll be an underground line, buried. An underground. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Uh, two, 18 inches deep, George? Yeah. Correct. Exactly. Yep. 18 inches and tracer tape, right? Tracer tape. Yeah, copper line, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty standard. Okay. I mean, we could, the other, I just didn't bring it up, I just, because if we did, you know, a couple of 250s, you would have to keep those, you know, keep those close to the house and they're getting filled all the time and those would be an eyesore. So I'm trying to think of ways to just keep it out of this line of sight. Yeah. I, I guess I, I, um, I mean, our concern are not environmental considerations, although we're certainly sensitive to those things, but um, that's not the data set that we have available to us. Um, I, um, I have difficulty sort of uh, imagining approving an above ground tank, um, even if you're hiding it by foliage, but um, does anybody else have other thoughts about that? I, I think given the, how far back it is, it, it, to go with the smaller ones, and, and that's what I've got one of the smaller ones, but it's tucked in the, the nook of the house. Mm -hmm. um, the the small if you go with the smaller ones they do have to get closer mm -hmm. the below ground i mean there there is still something that's showing um mm -hmm. but the accessibility and the the um i guess the the long term care of an above ground tends to be A little, a little more efficient. Like it, it, it does come down to the, the shrouding of it, from a street view, with the the fo the natural foliage. So. The Schlegels have their gas tank next to their house, but the uh, issue they had re recently was that there was a window near the tank. Right. So right. they had to move it out uh, a couple feet, I think it was. Right. Oh, but it's also hidden by bushes, so you never even know anything happened. So, George, I'm going to ask a clarifying question. With the tank located here, and I'm going to switch back just briefly to this photo. And we can see the, ex the excavators in this photo, and it's showing. Here, so you can see the edge of the excavator here. Right. Here's the house. We've got this this tree, the edge of the excavator. Um, I'm going to go back down one more photo so we can still see the edge of the excavator. But if I come back to the aerial, where are, are you standing, like basically here, taking 
taking the photo, looking straight, because here's the end of the house, so you were looking straight back. Pretty much, right to the end of that white fence line right there, I would say. Yeah, so you were looking straight back, so it's mm -hmm. straight back, but it's also like another 30 feet to the left out of that photo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it seems, and I am I from a perspective. So if the photo was coming straight back, and this is what I was was looking at, you know, basically back here is where the excavators park. I've got to come back here and over another twenty or thirty feet to the left to get to where the tank is. Is that fairly accurate? Yeah, I don't I don't think it's as far, um, okay. but yeah, maybe a little bit. I mean, that shot is, that shot's from the side of the house, pretty much from the front side of the house. I mean, I was trying to take a clear shot of, you know, just the straight back. So if you kind of use that bush right there, yeah. um, uh, the one cl closer to where I took the photo, it's kind of like a bush sitting in the middle of the grass. It's not even a bush, it's just kind of uh, to the left. That right there. Then if you go back to that bigger shot, maybe you can, I mean, it'll probably be a straight shot back from that, maybe a little to the left. Yeah, it's tough to pick up in the area because I've got a couple of clusters of trees here, so I'm not. Yeah. Yeah, I, it just for me, I, I would be because we deal with the, um, uh, you know, appearance is really the most important component of well, the preservation of the the kind of um, historic view, both the street and the individual building, and a lot of that includes by necessity, the landscape, I would be much more comfortable to see you bury whatever tank you decide to put in there just to, I would have a lot of trouble um, for me justifying having an above ground um, feature of, of that size. Um, and, and you know, you will probably keep the foliage going but a future owner might not. And then right. we've got this um, kind of anachronism sitting there um, so that's my thinking right right now. But uh, is that comfortable for you, George? You said you would be willing to bury it. Is that? Uh... I am. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I am willing to do it. I um, I do have environmental concerns as well. I don't mind burying it. I um, I just that's just my nature of the way I think. Yeah. Um, but um, I have done some research and some it goes both ways. I'm sure Matt, you've seen probably both. You know. You know. It's natural gas and it gets in the ground, but it's, we don't want any of that regardless, you know, anyways. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed to, to going that route if need be. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have a question and this may be totally off base. What condition are the trees back there? Um, um, I'm just... You know, in a, in a really bad storm, can that area get buried? It's a mixed bag. I, I've actually, as of this point now, you can probably see just to that, the left of the barn there, if you've seen the house, how much I've cleared already. We've cleared most of the dead or um, dangerous trees at this point. There's still a lot of very mature trees back there, but I've tried to clean up as much as possible that has any sort of hazardous um, um, anything that could happen to essentially I've tried you know you can't predict it all but you do the best to, I mean anything hanging over the barn anything hanging in that area but uh, because if, if we're going to we if you're going to bury it it could come out and be right in front of that foliage wouldn't have to be back kind of between the trees. Am I Correct. making any sense? Yes, I see what you're saying. So essentially like it would be like what I, I did add a picture of what a buried tank looks like. Um, yep. uh, there you go. So it'll be something like that. Yeah. I, I think the, the thing that I might be uh, interested in is um, some kind of, uh, you know, fencing that hid an above ground tank, um, as opposed to the foliage. I, 
I just worry that trees come down, foliage dies, um, people don't maintain landscaping, but if there's a structure around it and it's above ground, um, we could put something in our approval that says that a structure has to remain there to hide this tank. Um, is that something you might consider? So either a buried tank or like some sort of structure? Yeah, I mean, we've look uh, some sort of lat, you know, simple lattice uh, woodwork thing that people yeah. use around their condensers for air conditioning. Um, yeah, I'm not opposed to that. I think that it would probably set a good precedent for this to happen in the future because it's probably where most people will be going if they're changing all their systems. So that would be a good precedent. How does that, anybody that, else feel about that? Is that uh, is that acceptable to everybody else? Mm. I couldn't tell who said hmm. Was that Barbara? Oh, was that a hmm from Barbara? <laughs> I'm shaking my head, yes. If we oh, okay. <laughs> my head. But my I am head. just still concerned about, and maybe it's just the angle of the picture, it just looks like it's in the middle of a forest there. It looks like there's, you know, all the trees on both sides. And that may just be the angle, it may not be. I think it's just the angle. I think yeah. there's a clearing, so there's there's a clearing. So again, this, uh, right, so back of that, back of the house, there's a, you can see the arm right, of the excavator. Right. Here's the same arm of the excavator in the edge of the barn. And then if we come over here to the aerial view, which is it's a little off shot, I can actually I can bring up our I have a question. If I was to put it anywhere um, behind the house where it's not even seen from the road and buried, would that be fine as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it would be for me and okay. buried. Yeah. yeah. Behind the house, but I can't be seen. And right. It's yeah. Jurisdictional. Okay. This gives me options. I can work with all of those. Does it? Thank Does it? Yeah. Thank yeah. You. yeah. I thank think you very that much. out of sight, as I think. Uh, I think what we're all thinking, sure. but there are some there are some options there yep. at a site that's a little bit more permanent than foliage, actually. Um, sure, I can okay. work with that. Thank you. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, I, I think that's uh, going to be safer and easier for everyone having it, yeah, behind the house and yeah. So the barn, yeah, the barn that shows up in the photo is George's. Is this, is this barn, right? There isn't any other structure between the house and the barn. Correct. Right. So this is just a little clear. Yeah. So you can see there's like a little clearing. There's some lawn area here. Right. Now, but it goes so there. So okay. Okay. Um. Any other questions or comments about the propane tank? Um, any questions or comments for George about the, the window on the east side? Uh, just put the windows on the west side of the house. Right. West side, I'm sorry. Got that wrong. Yeah. Right. From a clarification, there had been that you can see actually right through here. The yeah. window that's on the east side of the house, the commission determined was non-jurisdictional because uh, it's concealed by the L of the front of the house. That was determined in May when uh, George spoke to the commission informally that uh, determined that, that that window was not jurisdictional, the one, the bay, the, the bay window that had been all the way through. Okay, so that's the location. And then here, woo, <laughs> Sure. Um, so what I did was I tried to model after um, what you did on the Cottage Street house um, in that meeting I was in um, earlier this year. Uh, it was a uh, Fibrex uh, with SIM uh, divided glass. Um, and that's essentially the same thing. This is an Anderson 100. I think, uh, Matt, you had spoken about that window in that meeting, but I can't remember. But um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it looks great. It looks really nice because the sim looks really good. It's not in the glass, it's outside the glass. 
Um, the Fibrex is a really nice material. I think it's uh, it seems to be the way a lot of things are going, um, as opposed to some vinyl. And um, yeah, that that was the um, this was essentially the best one I had found um, to match um, what the rest of the house looks like and um, what has looks like what's been done in the past with um, through the historic commission. Nice. Now, is that this first option that's going here? Do you, because you had sent me, is there factory model non reinforced? I, yeah, I wasn't sure. You had sent like four or five spec sheets. Yeah, so this right here is really more like it, the one you're on right now. Oh, K Cam, sorry, no, this is another one. This is in the glass. Um, I really kind of assumed that you didn't want to go that route just from President's set before. Um, but it's, it, it is an option. Um, this one up here, they don't show the grids, but there are grids um, in that same fashion of four and four on each side. Um, in the casement, it's a five by five casement. Mm -hmm. It says black, but they'll be white. Stationary, so the left and right panels will open and the center is stationary. And the cen center is stationary, correct. Okay. So this mimics what you have there now, except it's a smaller window. Is that exactly? Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. they, and they open. Okay. Oh, and they open. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and they've got divided lights. And they have sim divided, correct, to right. match the house. Yep. Yeah, that's nice. And why did you decide to go smaller, George? Was that a cost consideration or? Um, no, it's um, and that's a giant window that's there now, um, and. Uh, because of putting the kitchen there, that the window's low, so being able to have the sink and cabinets and stuff, we had to build it up a little bit. So. And nowadays you have to have um, special glass for uh, windows that are so low. Oh, yeah, uh, really. Oh. Yeah, they're pretty low, I mean, now, the existing ones. You have to have tempered glass if it's lower. Yeah. Oh, I see, yeah. I'll see. Okay. That's the problem we had with ours. We had to get tempered glass for our windows. That's being so close to the floor. Yeah, the existing are very low as of now. They're they're just about waist high. Right. Great. What color for the frame, George? The frame is white. Good. Any other questions about the window? Any other comments? Just in relation to the condensing units, I mean, is it still distance enough in terms of the opening of those windows? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping so. Right now the ground's high because of dirt's there, but you've got quite a lot more room because they're 32 high. I think that's above okay. 32 plus that flooring plus that, that, uh, that um, foundation. Okay. And you said the bulkhead will stay. That's going to stay. Yep. Okay. Okay. It's such a mix of of, win of centuries of windows, isn't it? Oh yeah. my God! It's, it's so interesting. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> it's like a catalog of three centuries of windows. It's unbelievable. The whole house is a catalog of a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Any other questions about the windows or comments? Or the window, sorry. All right. Let's um is there anything else you want to say, George, about any of these elements? And um no, no, I appreciate your guidance. I uh I'm feeling good about about everything so far and I'm trying to um really follow what I've heard in the meetings past and trying to carry that forward. So Thank you. All right. So, um, sorry, I'm having brain fog right now. Do we, Shannon, do we vote while George is present? Is that? Uh, yeah. 
Acceptable. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, so uh, it's it seems um, it seems to me, uh, and correct me if I'm, I'm if I'm wrong here, that we um, could put the approval for all three of these elements in one motion. Um, it'll be a very long motion, but um, I think that is possible. Um, but let me just get uh, make sure that we have the. Um, kind of the uh, general opinion of the commission before we go ahead and do that. So um, did I hear sort of a general consensus that the condensing units on the west side of the house were acceptable? Does anybody have a different thought about that? No? Okay, positioned either to the right of the window or under the window close to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, the propane tank, um, is the commission comfortable with leaving it to George to either um, bury it or put up some uh, physical structure around it to uh, shield it from public view? Well, is he moving it to the back of the house? Is that a definite or is that still up in the air? Um, well, I have to, I want to check with the excavator and with my HVAC to make sure I can. Uh, but if okay. I can, then definitely that's probably what I'll do. Okay. All right. So we can leave it as an option. Yeah. That, okay. yeah I would think that would be a third option then. So okay. mo moving it out of, out of street view, which moves it out of our purview or, or screening it with a permanent structure or bearing. Yeah. And the permanent structure should be a lattice type fence, just so we're, I understand. Well, I think that we, I mean. Necessary to be la a lattice. Yeah, it doesn't have to be lattice. It could be plank. It could be. Um, okay, so a fence, a fence type structure. And then maybe that we could, uh, you know, just do a quick share via email if that's the direction that it yeah. teach you. I think so. Yeah, I think that would be, that's fair to George. And I, um, he might come up with something a little fancier or not. I think we'll, we'll leave that to his, his uh, good judgment. Okay. Um, and then the uh, window, um, the five by five window, um, got the sense that everybody would be, would approve that. Is that acceptable? To everybody, the both the quality of the window George has chosen, and then the the change in the size. Mm -hmm. Any objections to that? Any of that? I have no problem. Okay. Okay. Great. It's going to be a massive motion. Um, All right. I'm just going to lease it real quick because it is a public hearing. I'm going to go through the even though there's no one else online and there's no one else in the room with us, but I uh, just ask for public comment if that's okay. Yes, please. Yeah, so just if, if there is anyone uh, that would like to offer, offer public comment regarding the hearing for 230 Main Street, please either raise your hand via Zoom or speak. Um, there's my prayer to hold your case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, there, there are none. So we okay, can... okay, good. Thank you. Um, Thank you. <laughs> All right. So let me let me try to put this in a motion, and Shannon, you can clean this up for us. Uh, and any of you, please uh, chip in if I'm not getting it right. So uh, I make the motion that we approve uh, the location of the condensing units for AC condensing units on the west side of the house um, in the locations that George has documented in his application. That we also approve the installation of either a 500 or 1,000, um, is it gallon propane tank? Right. Um, under, under one of these three conditions that it be moved to the back of the house uh, uh, under which we have no purview, that it be screened with some kind of a permanent structure um, that would be um, the final design of which would be circulated with the commission via an email or by bearing the uh, tank or tanks. And then uh, we, we approve the, um, make the motion to approve the, um, the installation of the new window 
uh, on the west side of the house um, using the uh, preferred uh, new window that uh, George has proposed. Any changes to that, commission members? They leave something out? Get it all right, okay. All right, so the motion's on the table. Could I have a second? I second. Thank you, Barbara. Any I'm discussion? I'm not repeating it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Um, any any discussion or comments about uh, the motion at this time? Okay, hearing none, uh, please indicate your approval by saying aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Any any nays? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Aye. Thank you, George. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much. And thanks again for taking the time. Very good. Our yeah. pleasure. I appreciate all your guidances and I'm excited for the project to be done too. <laughs> we, we are too, George. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good yeah. luck. Yeah. Truly Thank good you. luck. <laughs> thanks again. Take care, yeah. everybody. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye. Okay. All right, so we will close the public hearing for 230 Main Street um, and then return to the regular business of the commission. And looks like the next thing in, on our agenda is the review of the guidelines. Um, I am embarrassed to tell you that I haven't done anything with my assignment. And Anne, I, I'm not gonna drag you into the guilty phase. Okay. Anne and I are supposed to work on this um, I will have, uh, we'll be able to connect for the next meeting. Um, all of the rest of you have done your work. So thank you for <laughs> leading the way. Um, um, I know, um, Howard Scott, uh, and he's not even here this evening. He was gonna check the Greenwich regulations because Bob had some walls. info on walls. Yeah. Um, and Bob, if you had research that you did as you were going through, if you wanna send that through to me, then I can use it to start to tinker with the, the guidelines. Um, and Matt, you had made mention of charging stations and e-vehicles, or charging stations and, and electrical boxes being used yeah. perhaps in front of the house. So um, if you fellas have the stuff, like as you were going through and you want to just send it to me, then I can start to tinker with the, the wording and get it and create the draft. Um, for everyone to then critique and we can go from there as to, you know, how we want to word it. But then I can put it all together as one package for everyone. Uh, so I can include that and how I scripted it. And then we can, we can go from there and maybe have a, a work session in September a little bit. Super. Thank you. All right. So Shannon, are we close to, uh, the completion of our expansion project? We are. So it was approved in July at the town council meeting unanimously. Great. And there's a 30 day appeal period, which I believe expires at the end of next week. So it's 30 days from the date it's noticed in the newspaper. And by the time we do town council, do the legal notice and then get it over to the Hartford Current. Um, I believe the appeal expires in on August. 20th. And so what we're doing, um, why this has been going on, we're working on uh, creating the final map, right? Because we had the colored versions that highlighted each of the parcels and the pretty colors so it stood out. But the map that we use ultimately, right, everything now gets shaded in as the one color that they get officially added to the side. And then it'll be recorded. We'll have a mylar printed and get it recorded on the land record. So, so there's the final paperwork so that it's all, um, Paula Ray has everything she needs to record once the appeal is up. So um, we're working working through that. So it should be ready here at the end of August. So it'll, it'll be recorded um, hopefully by the end of August. And we'll be all good. That's great. Good. Yeah. Good news. 
Yeah, very good news. It takes a year. It's a full year, isn't it? It, it's, uh, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it's a full year, yeah. Devil is in the details. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's and nobody dropped the ball in terms of timing. It, we all clicked along, but it's it's a year long process. Um, that's just good information to be able to tell people who are interested. Tell them it takes a year. So, right. um, and I know that at least one of the um, new oh. members of the historic district are interested in applying for um, historic tax credits. So. They're ready to go. They're ready to to uh, get their application in for the January deadline. So, getting getting them in there. Um, all right, that's excellent. Anything else, uh, Shannon, on that? No, not on that. No. Great. Okay. Any other business to come before the commission at this time? Nothing major. We will be having, um, I'm anticipating there'll be a discussion uh, with you folks. There, uh, we've had some staff that have been working with uh, the trail committee. Um, there's a, we've got a, a bike safety committee, there's a bicycle advisory committee, there's um, bicycle friendly Farmington, there's, and then of course the trail commission. Um, looking into wayfinding signs for the, the trail, so that particularly when you get to major crossways like we have at, on 177 in Unionville, they're looking at other areas too. Um, so they're, right now there's a, they're doing an own internal work group and there's a consultant uh, that's working with them to develop an appropriate sign Right, what are the messages, you know, and how detailed, etc. So, once they kind of narrow that down, and this has been ongoing, um, and it, they're, they think they'll be ready in the fall uh, to speak, it'll be with you folks and with ADRC. Um, they might do individual meetings initially, but then a joint meeting. So, we're, we're kind of working through the, log the logistics. Um, Obviously, they have everyone together, then it's a meeting with like 16 people, which sometimes isn't overly productive. So, um, but they're, it's coming. And so just, um, you know, I guess as you're out and about, as you're staying in other municipalities and seeing wayfinding signs, if there's something that strikes your fancy, maybe snap a photo of it, just kind of have it in the back of your head. Um, but that, that conversation will likely be coming in the fall for, I think they're hoping to implement it. Spring. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Great. Yeah. That's a that's a big step. That's a huge step. It, 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 yeah. It yeah. Great. Good. And I don't have anything else that I can think of at the moment. Okay. Commissioners, do you have anything else to bring in front of the body or any questions that you might have? Okay, um, very good. Well, we'll adjourn this meeting and um, we will see each other in September.